everyone, it's Sharonda from Pay Your Weights, and today I'm going to be reviewing Midnight Mass, which is currently streaming on Netflix. This series is created, written, and directed by Mike Flanagan, who you may know from Haunting of Hill House, Haunting by Manor, Dr. Sleep. <sighs> he has blessed us with so much. I just, I'm grateful for Mike Flanagan. But this series centers around an isolated Isla community who is experiencing some miraculous gifts, but also too some frightening omens after a young charismatic yet mysterious priest arrives. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, hello, so glad you came, I hope you stay. I tell you what I liked about this series, what I didn't like about this series, and is it worth your time or not watching Midnight Mass where it's streaming on Netflix? So going into this spoiler-free review, I'm gonna let you guys know, there's no spoilers, I'm not gonna spoil anything for you. I do. Want to let you know there's going to be some interviews coming out after more people have had time to watch the series so make sure you stay tuned i'll link it to the comment section below but i have to give kudos to mike flanagan because even though um a lot of his work resides within the horror genre it feels i love that every piece that he comes out with it feels so different from the last and with midnight mass it feels like it's something that's very personal to mike flanagan but it's also something very relatable and i love the themes of this series as far as you know themes of religion themes of redemption and grief and faith and how you know, how some who have blind faith, how they can be led down a very dark path. Um, and I love that it's something that's just so relatable to what we've all been experiencing within this pandemic that it took on a deeper meaning for me while watching it. I love watching something that, yes, it does scare you. I was scared. I had some sleepless nights. We had to stop watching this tonight and go watching in the morning. I would say the first half of the series is is the most intense of the horror, like how scary it is. And as you get into the last couple of episodes, it's not it's not that bad for those of y'all because it's people who be like, Sharana, it's scary. Am I gonna be able to make it? I made it through. We just had to switch to watching it during daytime, just daytime hours, because we don't need those spirits, you know, in our dreams. It was it was a rough couple of nights for me, um, but. I love how it's something that with the dialogue, there's a lot of dialogue that happens in this series. I will tell you it is going to be like a slow burn the first half because you have to get introduced to this community. And I would say from the look and feel of how the series looks, as far as there's the gloom, there is a despair. You can tell that this town has been through a lot. And through the dialogue, the conversations that they have with other people, you can tell that a lot of people have suffered a lot of loss. There's a lot of grief that is happening. There's a lot of pain that is happening. And I love from a stylistic choice for how it looks, it gets you into that gloomy mood. Like I was like, man, I know it's supposed to be horror, but I'm a little depressed right now. They going through a lot. Ooh, this is put in context like, okay, I'm gonna stop complaining for this week until the series is over because they're going through a lot more than what I am. Um, but I love that feeling of it, the slow burn. Um, there's a lot of things that are said that would just make you sit back and think. And those are the things that really um, draw me closer into the content that makes me want to watch it even more is something that stays with me even after finishing all of the episodes of this series to really make you reflect um, and reflect on your choices, reflect on your own personal community, reflect on your uh, reflect on your relationship with faith. I thought it did a very great job of still leaving a lasting impact even after the final episode is over. Now, what I will say is there are some fun standouts. Let me let me do some shout outs real quick. I'm going to tell you right now, there is going to be a character that you hate. OK, you're going to hate them. I had to say, Lord, I know this is a show, but this lady is disrespectful. OK, petty on a whole nother level. Um, Samantha Sloyan, who plays Bev, um, who is uh, she is a woman of she is within the church. She's a religious leader of some sort within this community. Um, but she is a very great example of the career corruption that can be within religion um someone who can push people away from religion and I think it was really important to include a character like that because I think we've all experienced some people I was just like I know you in the church and you're supposed to be doing stuff for the Lord but I think these words that you be using against me to call me a heathen you need to go take a look in the mirror honey and I think Samantha is absolutely fantastic as Bev as we really get to see what her character is capable of how she plays into this larger scope of what is happening within this community I think a lot of people will will hate her but be like you know what Samantha you did the dang on thing but I do like Zach Guilford as Riley who is really he is one of our main characters of the series if you know from any of his previous Netflix series uh, Mike Flanagan's Netflix series there's always this central character who has gone through a traumatic experience um, who is really trying to either run away or to cope 
and really learn how to get through what has happened to them, how this has affected other people within their lives. And I think this is when we get deeper into our stories of redemption, of grief, of forgiveness, and what that looks like and the toll that that can actually take on a person. But I love the exploration of someone who is dealing with these things, who is not someone who has to believe in a higher power. And I love the contrast that we see um, as this town is becoming more religious. I think it's interesting to note how how Riley's character is able to actually see um, through some of these holes that just don't really make sense as to why these miraculous things are happening to this community. Now also too, I love Kate Siegel who plays Erin. She's always fantastic in these series. Um, and I really love um, her character as well. I'm not gonna delve too deep into her character, but I really did um, enjoy her. Also too with um, Raul Coley, um, he plays the sheriff, a Muslim sheriff in this town. And with his character, we really get to see what happens when, you know, with those who don't believe um, in the same God as that we believe in, you know, how a community can turn against them, how they can judge them without actually trying to get to know them, or also do trying to understand the resemblances of different religious backgrounds, of different religious beliefs, because at the end of the day, all of them still believe in a higher power and how you have to be accepting um, to all, to all people, no matter what their religious faith is, what their religious background is. I think it's very important with his character, but most importantly through the relationship between him, him and his son, showcasing the dynamics between generations and how we view religion, um, which is something that's been really big, especially with me and my family dealing with how religious my family was to how I went through my own spiritual journey. That's why I really enjoy that relationship watching that on screen between those two characters um now outside of that the horror is great there is a lot of blood it's a lot of blood y'all it's a lot of blood there's a lot of gore there is some animal cruelty for those of you just too much for you I'm gonna let you know there's gonna be a couple of scenes yeah you're gonna be like Sharonda I'm glad you told me about this I just want to warn you guys and let you guys know ahead of time I don't want you coming for me saying why you didn't tell me that I was going to be experiencing this while watching it but I think that the horror as a whole I just think that they do a really great job of having this mystery that is taking over this town these revelations that you find but what makes you even more scared for me is the religious aspect of the blind faith that we see from the community how blind faith can lead you into be into being fooled by a devil in disguise and I really love that overarching theme um, as we really get to figure out what is happening within this community now outside of all of the glowing things that I do have to say about this series I do have just two issues not really two issues my main issues is I did want them to delve a little bit deeper into Ry Riley's backstory um, um, normally there's like this huge reveal that happens with a character and I don't know if that was me trying to as I said I love how his works are so different but I also I was like I was expecting something to happen based on previous um, series that Mike Flanagan has created and I didn't think that Riley's story really had the payoff that it that I wanted um, I did like um, his arc of redemption and what that looks like for him and how he decided to reconcile with what happened to him as we met him in the beginning of the series. But I did want a little bit more from his character, just like a little smidge, just a little smidge more. Um, also too, I will have to say, for others, it didn't necessarily bother me, but I do just want to reset that expectation. It is a slow burn. It starts off very, very, very slow. There's very like long dialogue. And for some people, that's just not going to be their type of thing. So I'm very interested to see what the audience reaction will be for Midnight Mass. Um, I know from a critical standpoint, I, I, I love this series. I really love what he did with this. I just love the deeper meaning and themes that are mixed in this like religious psychological horror series. I just thought it was a really, a really great job. Just job well done. Also too, I'm sorry, I forgot to give Hamish um, who plays uh, Father Paul. He is absolutely fantastic um, portraying his character as he's so mysterious. You can tell that there's something troubling him. You can tell that there's a secret that he's keeping in. Um, but I really loved his character. I love the acting that he gave to the character. But most importantly, just this exploration of what happens when, you know, this idea or belief, this thing that you think that you're doing, you think that you're helping people, um, but how other people can misconstrue that vision, how they can turn that vision down a path to darkness, but also to um, really this exploration of people who sometimes they lose faith. 
they lose faith in when you're lost and you're leading people, how you can lead other people down a very dark and dangerous path as well. But yeah, but outside of that, I enjoy Midnight Mass. I will tell you guys now, go watch it. Start watching it now so you can get some of the scarier episodes out before it starts getting dark. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this series in the comment section below. Please stay tuned for the interviews that I have with the cast. But those are my thoughts on Midnight Mass. As always, my name is Sharonda from Payer Awaits. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I love you guys 3000. And until I see you again, bye.